everybody, Tim Loomis and Chris Shores here, owners of White Wheel Real Estate, and today we're going to talk to you about the Artemis launch that is the much anticipated and also real estate on the moon. We're going to be talking to you today about the much anticipated Artemis launch. Uh, when the heck is this thing going off? And then also at the end of the video, stay tuned, we're going to go over six convenient things that NASA contributed that make our day-to-day -day lives just a little bit easier. Question of the day, who's your favorite president, Chris? You know, one of my favorite presidents, Sim, happens to be President Dwight D. Eisenhower. Why is that? Why, you must ask? Well, let me please tell you. Uh, because, you know, I'm an aviation nerd. You know, I love anything that goes in the sky. That would be including rockets and spaceships and airplanes. So President Dwight D. Eisenhower on July 29th, 1958, signed the National Aeronautics Space Act, which essentially founded the National Aeronautics Space Administration. That's a mouthful. A lot of mouthfuls there, <laughs> aka NASA. So NASA was essentially founded on July 29th, 1958. And this was due to, after World War II, the Department of Defense had a serious research push to get into the fields of rocketry and upper, upper atmospheric sciences in order to ensure American leadership throughout all these new technologies that are being developed at the time. Awesome, that was a mouthful, yeah. Thank you, Dwight D. Eisenhower, we appreciate it. And that's a lot of fun information about NASA as well that I didn't know. So about the launch, the Artemis is going to be the first step in a new era of human space exploration. So this wasn't just NASA doing this, it's also coupled with international and corporate partnerships to make this come to fruition. The Artemis 1 is going to be one of many launches. This one's going to be an unmanned launch testing NASA's space, space launch system, SLS, and also the Orion spacecraft, which is gonna sit on top of the rocket. So this first one, again, is gonna be unmanned, but in the future, we hope and anticipate to send some more astronauts up to the moon as soon as possible. This is going to mark the first benchmark in sending somebody to the moon in over 50 years. So 1972 Woo! was the last time, obviously, that we had landed on the moon. I wanna know what took you so long, NASA. Now. Funding in red tape is what it sounds like. Funding in red tape is what it sounds like. Maybe if we, yeah, maybe if we'd given them some more money, we'd be up there a little bit quicker. Yeah, I don't know, something like that. But you know, it's kind of scary thinking that if you see the infographics, it's just a capsule on top of a rocket. Yeah. It's you know probably a good reason <laughs> that we test it without any humans in it first. I think that's why they're doing it. Yeah. Speaking of that, the purpose of the Artemis One mission is to. Uh, First of all, it's basically just gonna be a, a huge test flight to make sure that all systems are go, that they can send the rocket, uh, they can get it into orbit around the moon, they can complete the necessary missions involved with that. There's other uh, facets of this mission that they're, they're trying to accomplish at the same time. And then, that, of course, they want a safe splashdown. So this is going to allow the segue to Artemis 2 and 3, which are going to be the manned crew missions that Tim previously mentioned. It's really exciting. The NASA engineers are really trying to set the stage for further exploration of the moon, uh, doing long-term uh, space travel, and they want to set up basically a camp or outpost for future deep space space exploration missions. There's a lot of S's There's a lot of in S's, space, yeah. in science, in NASA. Yeah, so you guys, um, would you stay on the moon uh, for an undetermined amount of time? I don't know how long it's gonna be, but would you stay on the moon? Leave Let a us comment below, below. Yeah. Let us know. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow. And in case any of you are wondering what the heck is behind us, um, this is a space and aeronautics owned, uh, would you call it a building, sphere? Golf ball. Golf ball, but it is a Doppler radar. So looking at stars, weather, all sorts of stuff. If we can find more info on it, we'll put it uh, in a link below. But this just, is actually the second largest golf ball in the world. The first being the one at Epcot. Yes. So I guess. Yeah, we're guessing. <laughs> um, so that's what's behind us. But as far as the mission, so the part that everyone wants to know about, when is this going to happen? Um, it's been scrubbed a couple times. We know probably half of you drove down here, waited in a mile long distance of traffic for like five hours just to get down there to hear the unfortunate news that it was scrubbed. But latest that we've heard, it's supposed to take off October 2nd. The total mission time is gonna be 38 days, 23 hours and 49 minutes. Now that's pretty specific. Yeah. Well, it's NASA, tell it's me, gotta be, it's rocket me, science, tell baby. Tell me how 
We can predict that to the minute, but you can't tell me where exactly the hurricane's going to hit Home Depot. I don't know. You or why me. we can't get a printer Put to work tin, correctly. Tin foil hat. Yeah. Put your tin foil hat on. Um, the total distance of the mission is going to be 1.3 million miles, and the re-entry speed is going to be 24,500 miles per hour, or Mach 32. Um, tell me how, what you have to say about that, Top Gun. Tom, Tom Cruise. Cruise. <laughs> Let me know. Yeah, tell me what you have to say about that. <laughs> All right, so kind of going along with that, we all want to know, especially guys, oh, 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 that's a Tim Allen right there, tool yeah. time, um, how this rocket is getting powered and kind of the, um, the specs on that. So the space, space launch system, the SLS, when it launches and fires up, it's going to be propelling the 5.75 million pound rocket into space, which happens to be 322 feet tall, which is a little bit taller than the Empire, or excuse me, the Statue of Liberty. Wrong national treasures there. Uh, so it's a tall rocket, it's a heavy rocket. It's powered by four RS-25 rockets, which at the time of liftoff are gonna burn 735,000 gallons of liquid propellant. After that, it's going to uh, kick in its twin rocket boosters, which is gonna burn another 2 million pounds of solid propellant, totaling up over 7 million pounds of thrust for the time of liftoff, which is gonna get this baby into orbit in around just over eight minutes which is pretty, pretty fast. Pretty fast and uh, that's awesome. 5.75 million pounds, think about that. In eight minutes, that's, that's nuts. So yeah, that's, that's why that's people are driving yeah. and standing in traffic just to see that. So it's a, it's a pretty big deal. It's a know? pretty big deal. So we all look Go forward NASA. to it. Go NASA. Now as You guys are doing as, a great job over you there. You guys are doing a wonderful job. We just want to let you know that. Um, as far as just another little fact, the budget for 2021 for NASA was $23.2 billion, which, only S which is only about a half a percent of the federal budget overall. And then that stretched over, that was stretched over their 20 plus different locations and all the different, um, you know, what is it? Different centers and testing Doppler's facilities and, and testing and facilities yeah. and all the different things that NASA has. So um, on to part number two. That sounds like a good deal, man. Show me the money. Show me, Show the, me the money, Jerry. <laughs> Tom Cruise number second two. reference there. We're on a roll. We're on a all roll. Right. Yeah. Good all right, good deal. Dude. Um, so then on to part two of our video here, we're going to talk about just a quick little thing of six technologies that NASA contributed that make our everyday lives a little bit easier. Um, I'll go with three. First one is the squirt gun. I'm not Super soaker. Super soaker. I'm not sure exactly how they, what part they play in that, but that's one of them. The other one is a water filter. Um, and then the last one was, oh, invisible braces. So I'm not, again, I'm not sure exactly how they got to these, but they did contribute to the technology and we'll put a link below so you can read more about it. What's the other three? Uh, so the other three is going to be the cordless vacuum, AKA the dust buster. You remember that old 1980s thing? It used to hang and it was hung on yeah. the wall. So, in the you know, yeah. NASA helped develop that due to cordless. See, um, we're older than we look. Right. <laughs> to uh, the cordless uh, battery technology. And the, so that would be four. So the fifth is going to be uh, infrared ear thermometer. They helped develop. And six is gonna be insulation. And that's gonna be insulation for your home. It's gonna be that Mylar insulation. And that kind of makes sense with NASA being able to need to um, kind of ward off the effects of uh, extreme cold and heat entering and re-entering the atmosphere. They needed something for insulation. So through that, the insulation for your homes was developed. And that was a very nice segue for Tim and I to be able to tie in real estate with insulation and homes. And it's all one big happy world here, yep. so, NASA. Yeah, 24,500 miles per hour. You might want to throw, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that's, that's, that, that's something different. A couple layers of insulation that's, going on yeah, there. You probably need that. So um, again, that's White Whale Weekly. Uh, thank you guys for watching. If there's any updates on this launch, we will put them in the link below. So we'll update this page. If there's anything we could do for you, big or small, real estate, um, let us know. Uh, all of our information's below as well. Like, subscribe, follow. Hope you have a great week. See you guys. One take wonders, it's hot and there's National the biggest horse flies I've ever seen in my life out here. <laughs>